Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair. So if that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. Shirt's a bit loud, sorry. Today we enter the world of TikTok again, but we're gonna be looking at the nice side of skincare TikTok, the professional side of skincare TikTok, and looking at some stuff I learned from dermatologists today. I feel like with the YouTube following I have, I have a responsibility to actually introduce you to some professionals. But if you don't have TikTok, it's worth downloading the app just to follow these dermatologists and these experts, real experts in skincare. But before we get into that, today's video is sponsored by Functional Beauty. Again, since the last sponsor I did with them, I've still been using their shampoos and conditioners. I mentioned before that um, I have trouble with an itchy dry scalp because I wear a lot of hair product. I wash my hair nearly every day as well. So I've been using like head and shoulders for the longest time. And this is one of the only shampoos I use that isn't like a dedicated dandruff shampoo that keeps my flakiness at bay. I wear a lot of black as well, so I cannot afford to be flaky. And this does the job. So pretty much the same as my last shampoo because I love that formula. My goals with this shampoo and conditioner was to replenish, hydrate, and strengthen my hair. It goes through a lot of heat styling, so those are the key things I wanted to concentrate on. I got their newer scent, Isn't She Bubbly? She is. And got that at like a medium scent. You can have no fragrance at all, but I do like a little bit of fragrance in my shampoo and conditioner. I also ordered a hair serum this time alongside the shampoo and conditioner, just because I like to leave something in my hair after I wash it. I like to leave something in my hair, sleep in it, then wash it out the next day. Again, it goes through so much styling and heat styling. It's important to take that extra care of your hair like you would do your skin. So as you know, with Function of Beauty, it's completely customizable. You get to pick your hair goals and have your name on the bottle as well. I'm always really boring with this. It's just like Function of James, but I like it. It's nice. You also get a pack of stickers that comes with the bottles as well that you can decorate with. I like to keep mine pretty plain because I feel like it just suits most bathrooms. And look, you get new winter stickers as well with the upcoming season. As I mentioned, I picked the new fragrance, Isn't She Bubbly? This is a champagne fragrance. And citrus for a limited time over the holidays. All their products are vegan, cruelty-free, and sulfate-free as well, which is really important if you had colored hair. As I mentioned, I've had this before. The shampoo I go through super quick. You literally only need two pumps, but I'm like, like five pumps. The conditioners last forever. My other conditioner is kind of like down to here. I still got a long way to go, but I like having the different fragrance options. They've also changed up the packaging. They changed up the plastic as well. So it's more environmentally friendly, meaning less plastic waste in landfills and less waste altogether. So yes, I really, really love these. I know after my last sponsor with Functional Beauty, a lot of you were wanting to try it out. So if you haven't already tried this out and customize your own shampoo, conditioner, hair treatment, check the link in the description box down below for 20% off your first purchase. So let's get looking at the experts. We're going to start off with Dr. Shah again. He has a huge following on TikTok. I believe he's like in the millions, but I need to share this with you because I was tagged non, and I'm not even exaggerating about this. I was tagged non-stop in a very similar video over on Instagram about this facial treatment. And I had no idea um, what this was. And a lot of people's like, is this real? I was like, I don't know. So Dr. Shah is going to explain exactly what this weird charcoal -y type treatment is. Wait, is that just dirt on the skin? Nope. This is something called the Hollywood laser peel and it's one of the most satisfying things to watch. They put a black carbon lotion over the surface of the skin and then they run the laser over it. It helps with hyperpigmentation and it also boosts collagen to get rid of wrinkles and there's almost no downtime with this procedure. That's so interesting because I thought it was literally just a gimmick. I thought it was like, oh, charcoal and magnets and I had no idea what this was. Was. And I tried desperately to search online to see what this treatment was, but I had no idea where to start. So this is why it's important, especially to follow Dr. Shah, because he does these amazing reaction videos to a lot of viral skincare content that I just don't have the answers for. Next up, we have a dermatologist called Dr. Jenny Liu. So if I pronounce that wrong, I think I might pronounce her surname wrong. But she answers a lot of questions I get about using retinoids and retinols and how to start your journey with retinoids. A lot of the concerns are retinoid dermatitis. And other than buffering retinoids, I don't really know how to avoid this. So I found this video and I thought she sums it up perfectly. Of course she does, she's a dermatologist. Let's look at her advice. So 
so simple. Her profile is full of little tips like that about questions that I get asked all the time. So really for me, I think the standout technique there is the sandwich technique, which is something I do still to this day when I use retinols. And that is to apply a moisturizer and then put the retinol over the top. I don't quite do the sandwich technique. Maybe I should do that. I'm not quite sure the reason for doing that. But for me, this just buffers any irritation. I don't get that dryness that you expect from using retinoids or retinols, sorry. I remember being scared to start using retinols because I just, I, I heard so many things about like you could get d contact dermatitis, you could get extreme dryness, irritation, flaky skin, and I was terrified. I was like, this product is far too advanced for me, but really that sandwich technique kind of thing I do really, really helped. So the next profile we're gonna look at is another dermatologist, of course, called Mami Dr. Mamina Terragano. Again, probably butchered that, I'm so sorry. But her whole profile, her whole TikTok is literally like, cheat sheet after cheat sheet after cheat sheet, like just full jam packed of information that if you can download so you have it as a reference all the time. But a common question I get on this channel that I kind of know a few answers to from personal experience, anecdotal evidence, is what age should you start using certain products? Does a 15 year old need to chemical exfoliate? Does someone in their 20s need to start using retinoids? Is it too late to use retinoids? And I found this video by Dr. Mamina where she goes through every kind of like um, age, so like 20s, 30s, 40s plus, and tells you what you should be doing. Let's have a look. I will watch this video over and over. I obviously downloaded it and I've just been pausing every age group, of course, obviously the 30s as well, and thinking, do I do that? I need to start doing that. Thinking about it, cleanser, yes. Sunscreen, yes. Antioxidant, yes. Retinoids, yes. Well, retinols here in the UK. Peptides, yes. Exfoliation, yes. Chemical pills I've had before. I've also had Botox. I've not had mild resurfacing lasers, but I've had fillers in my nose just here. I could pretty much do all that other than the resurfacing lasers, which is something I might look into. Mm. But yeah, love her profile. As I said, it's just every single video is jam packed with such amazing information. I discussed purging in a recent video, or did I? I don't know what order I do these videos in, but I filmed a video where we talk about purging and mistaking purging for irritation. And it's something I get asked questions about all the time. And there is a very clear difference between purging and irritation. I have a video here by Dr. Lindsay, a derm guru over on TikTok. She is a dermatologist and she explains purging perfectly and what you should look out for and how to recognize purging. Have you ever heard of the purge? The purge is whenever you start using a new active skincare product and it increases cell turnover on your skin. This is a good thing. It means that your skin cells are turning over more rapidly resulting in fresh healthy new skin. However, when that happens, it means that everything deep down in the skin has to go somewhere. That means pimples, excess sebum, and dirt. So sometimes when you start a new active skincare product like a retinoid or AHAs and BHAs, you may start to break out with a mix of blackheads, whiteheads, or comedones. This may be discouraging or disheartening at first, however, stick with it. After a few weeks, your skin will start to settle down and the product will start working and your pimples will go down. Fortunately, the pimples that you get with the purge tend to go away much quicker than a normal breakout would. While it's tempting to want to stop, please don't. Make sure you're just using gentle skincare products during this time, like a moisturizer, a gentle cleanser, and sunscreen to help you get through it. One thing I always forget to mention about purging is whilst the spots look like your normal breakouts, they go so much quicker. I always use the Paul's Choice 2% BHA as an example, because that's one of the products that I purged a lot with and I saw it through and it's completely worth the um, purging. But my breakouts were so rapid. They would come and go within a matter of days. And when it, usually when I get a spot, it's there for like, a couple weeks and then leaves a nasty scar. But this, the the rate, the turnover rate was insane. So that's a really, really good indication of how you can tell the difference between a purge and irritation. I got like a bonus one for you now. So this is a video by Charlotte Palomino and she literally posted about this last night, but I needed to share it. <laughs> 
and just add it on here. She is a brand owner and shares a lot of skincare education on all her platforms, Instagram, TikTok. And this is surrounding the idea of reef safe sunscreen. So the idea is that sunscreens with chem chemical filters in are bad for reefs and lead to reef bleaching, which there's a bit of controversy behind anyway, but little do we know that it's also the physical sunscreens that could be causing problems. So let's have a look at this Instagram TV. Nuance November, is coral reef safe sunscreen for it? Let's find out. Full nuance is on lab muffin, but when they tested zinc oxide in these tests that put really high levels of something that you wouldn't find in nature, guess what? Zinc oxide also bleaches coral reefs. Except the kicker is with zinc sunscreens, you actually need a higher percentage to make the SPF work. So you're really just up in the ante with that one. We'll have experts that have dedicated their lives to studying the coral reefs saying, we're really perplexed by the focus on all the sunscreens. I completely understand wanting to do conscious consumption, but when you have scientists telling you this is not a thing, why do we make it a thing? At the end of the day, they all have the same complaints. This is a tokenistic show from the government. They're not taking actual change. They're distracting people into making them think that they're actually doing something. When this really doesn't help, there are 200 other things that we need to address before this. Based on the research that we do have, one of the leading professors and researchers and just minds on coral reef bleaching is like, the studies aren't really relevant. They're really limited. So, it also applies to zinc oxide. Ultimately, this is more of a commentary on marketers not doing enough research, not understanding that zinc oxide is also damaging to the environment. If you're going to take the same method of studies as was done on chemicals, ultimately, this is not a commentary on you. And I hope that that came off. My question is, why do brands continue to cherry pick information to motivate our purchases? Why don't they include all the information so that we can actually make informed choices? If you're gonna throw stones at glass houses, just make sure you're gonna hit all of them. And Professor Terry Hughes, he's the one that says it best. It's about 200 on the list. So ultimately, do what makes you feel best. Buy the things that make you wear sunscreen every day. Happy skincare buying. Yes, so this was such a hot topic when I mentioned reef safe sunscreen, and that is basically a myth in one of my videos. A lot of people got very angry. A lot of people felt personally attacked and they were like, well, every little helps and it does. One thing Charlotte actually mentioned in her stories as well is using reef safe sunscreen is the equivalent of putting a band-aid on a broken leg. Whilst the thought is there and whilst it's nice to think that we're helping in some way, it doesn't help the bigger picture. It's not actually helping the issue. There's so many other factors, 200 factors in fact, that are damaging coral reef more than sunscreen filters. So no, the majority of your physical sunscreens aren't reef safe safe either. Again, that's not a personal attack on anyone. What brands do is latch onto things like this and make us feel good about doing something. They make us think we're playing our part in a way that maybe we are in the tiniest bit. Yes, every little helps. And if the majority of us are helping in some way, it leads to a bigger change, but those changes have to be the right kind of change. Again, back to the broken leg analogy, if hundreds of us are putting plasters on a broken leg, it's still broken on the inside. <laughs> so yes, I hope that was interesting. Thank you again to Functional Beauty for sponsoring today's video. Check out the 20% off link in the description box down below. And let me know some amazing experts that you follow online as well. Of course, everyone is linked in the description box down below again, but that is it from me now. I will see you next time.